All right, this morning we're going to be working on the Tormac 612 PSG surface grinder. Here we have the belt attachment, which runs 1x42 belts. And the awesome thing about the belt attachment is now we can surface grind titanium. Can't do that so well with the stones, at least as far as I know. Um, so this is a sheet of about 0.160 inch uh, titanium 6AL4V. And when it comes, it's sort of not totally flat. My fisheye lens is making it look a lot more bowed than, it's, than it actually is. That's funny. That's trippy. Um, so we're going to surface grind one side, because this is going to be, uh, I think, 24 pocket clips. So I want the top side of the pocket clips to be super pretty and flat and accurate. And then when I machine the back side, it'll sit flat on the table. So here my bro, Eric, is using uh, 3M VHB, I think. Some sort of 3M M tape, 10 thou thick, a little foamy, right? Yeah. Um, Double-sided sticky tape, basically. Yeah. 3M, so it's good stuff. So he's got a bunch of strips down there, and he's going to sticky this thing down. Just taking off the second layer to expose the upper sticky part. So there is a magnetic chuck, magnetic chuck on here, which works great for the blades. Um, titanium is non-magnetic, hence the sticky tape, in case you were wondering. So the question is, what belt are you going to use? Not a micron belt, as I'm driving stuff. Um, yeah, so here's the belt attachment. 1x42 comes with a serrated wheel. I think we might try to get a solid wheel. Might give us a better surface finish. What do you think, in 220? Yeah. So here we have a Norton 220 belt. Doesn't yeah. tell us too much in there, but... I think it's just the aluminum oxide belt. Okay. So the surface grinder is a three-axis creation, and what Tormac has done is basically put stepper motors on the side to side and in and out axis and done really simple controls just speed and feed single RPM and then the Z the up and down I think surface grinding calls it something else it's not Z it's I don't know the up and down is a hand crank and you can dial it in uh, so Eric's just got it positioned on that side and lots of surface grinding tips and tricks yeah, it's about 160, 162 right now. Yeah. Um, 156 would be perfect. So you got five or seven thou to play with. All right, so just to get it uh, touched off on the material, I just brought it down until, you know, moving it manually, you can hear the new belt scraping against the material. It's not going to cut off a lot from there, but it's a good place to start. Um, you know, you're not too low at least. It's a good rough estimate starting point. Yeah, and then you're not working, you know, going for a little while down to touch off mm -hmm. um, while the machine's running and everything. I like it, quick and dirty. Yeah. So we've had the surface grinder for nine months now or something like that, and I've basically let Eric take full control of it. 
I use it every now and then for little things, but Eric does all the production work on it, so he's the expert. You know, whenever I need to use it, I ask him how to do it, or can I use this belt, or whatever, um, which makes me feel really inadequate. But, you know, it's good because Eric got to take a chance to really master this thing and, and figure it all out, and that's why I let him run it. So at this point, <clears throat> it's just going to keep going front to back until we stop it. Um, and sometimes Eric will do that on purpose, called sparking out. So it'll just keep going and going and going until it, it stops cutting, basically. But this was a roughing pass, so we need to go lower now and uh, get rid of that. You can see the dip in the middle. Although it's still cutting hard, so I'm going to keep it. Let it spark out a little bit more before I go down hard in. Okay. So that first one was your baseline path, like your, your roughing path. You don't know exactly how deep you went. Right. Yeah, um, it, it cut a little bit harder than I expected it to. But we're not going for precision on this one. No. So for the second pass, which you just did. Yeah, I just went down like half a thousand. So this is after a few passes, not taking off too much, maybe what a thou at the most yeah, overall. Yeah, in total. Yeah. Um, and with the warp in the material and any parallelism issues, um, they're still a little bit untouched. And pitting and stuff from yeah. just the material. Let's see how close we can get here. Yeah, and obviously you can see the step over that, that Eric's using here. But I mean, the finished part is looking really good for a 220 belt. Um, if we want it super pretty, of course, we just go higher, higher in belts. That's why there's, you know, a stack of belts right there. Yeah. Although titanium is kind of weird, and if you get, start going too fine of a belt, then it gets too hot, it starts like orange peeling and getting a weird, ugly finish. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't like going too much higher than 220 on the surface grinder. Ah. Um, just because I can't control the speed and the pressure and the and the heat. Right. But you were saying a theory that if you could spin the belt at a slower RPM. Yeah, I think if we had like a, a um, variable drive on this and I could slow the RPM down, yeah. then I could make it work so better it for it titanium. Is, it is. It's 20... Uh, yeah, it's 100 volts. So it's uh, 2800 RPM. Yeah, if we, if we put a VFD on this, then that could be um, yeah. worth our time and money to do. I think it would be very interesting to do. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll do that. All right, what's next? Uh, just keep going until I get rid of the, the last of it. All right. Um, what a lot of guys do for surface grinding is they'll take some die cam. This is a sweet squidgy bottle. And it dries, you know, within seconds, and then uh, the next cut that you do, you, you'll see <laughs> if you cut it off, you know, if you cut all the blue off. So, handy stuff. Yeah. Smells like an auto body shop. So this is what Eric looks like when he's working hard.
So the die cam will be especially helpful for the pits, right? Yeah. Because they, they're kind of harder to see just with your eyes. And especially with the 220 grit, they kind of blend into the, the grit sometimes. Yeah. So you got almost everything except for two little spots there. Yeah. And that's just on the first pass. You know, one more little pass and we should be good here. Even at the same height. Yeah, just let it go back and forth. Yeah, because with the belts and the soft wheel, it, it forgives, like it compresses a little bit. Yep. Um, so it'll keep on cutting for many passes. Yeah, like this one's almost gone already. Yeah. Whereas like the, the regular wheels, the stones, the stones, they just kind of, they spark out a lot quicker because they're, you know, once they're not cutting anymore, they're just not cutting. So it looks like we've cut through all of the, you know, pitting and scratches and everything, just with the 220 belt. Uh, Eric didn't let it spark out too much, just because he says it'll keep cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting for a long time. Um, but it feels really good. I mean, it's, it feels great. You know, it's a little bit grainy just because it is a higher grade belt, but it's going to be super flat. For, uh, for the next step of machining. And this is going to be the top side of the clips. So um, it's going to be a lot easier to finish them up in the end. That's all Eric's job anyway. Yay. <clears throat> so are you happy with it? I am. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I need to go up another belt. Yeah. Yeah. Since I'm scratching them with my fingers. But yeah. Now you just pry it off of the tape. Yep. And you're good to go. Good pry tool. Oh, oh, that's why you have that here. <laughs> I thought you were trying to fix it or something. Oh, I was. It, it could still be fixed. It's an older one, number 120. Yeah. I think it's still completely good. I just <laughs> never did the other side. <laughs> Yeah, I kept seeing that, that blade right at the top here, like, for the past few months. I think I'll get a worse one for this one. Anyway, so that is the PSG Surface Grinder. Uh, lots more videos of this guy to come. It's been a super fun addition to our shop. Um, having an automated Surface Grinder is really cool. <laughs> it's really neat. It is. And the belt attachment makes us so happy. Beautimus. Nice polishing rag. Yep. That's what clothes are good for. Yeah, these scratches, they don't look deep. They don't look like much, but they're a pain in the butt to get out yeah. on a final part, you know? But that's just a lot more even and consistent, and more importantly, flat. Yep. Flat is good. Alright. There we go. Thanks for watching. Bye.